Hello, welcome to ACC F3 Financial Accounting. Today we will be learning about irrecoverable debts and allowances. So irrecoverable debts are also known as bad debts, which mean that customers who have bought from us on credit may no longer be able to pay off those debts that they owe to our company. So why we need to treat these bad debts is because of how trade receivables are to be recognized. So per definition wise, let's clarify that irrecoverable debts are specific debts which will never be paid. Now note how we have underlined the word never, meaning that there is a highly unlikely chance that this debt will ever be paid to the company. How are we going to treat this bad debt? Well, we are going to write it off as an expense. Now expenses are recorded in the statement of profit or loss, which is exactly where we're going to recognize our irrecoverable debt expense. So what is going to happen and why is it written in off? Well, firstly, for a trade receivable, a customer who has purchased our goods or service on credit is firstly recognized as a current asset, which means that we expect to receive some economic benefits from them in the short term. Now, in order to recognize this as an asset, we must know for sure that we are going to be receiving some economic benefits or in other words, money. So when we know that our trade receivable is no longer capable of giving us these economic benefits, they no longer meet the definition of an asset. So they will have to be removed from our statement of financial position, but not entirely, because when we're talking about irrecoverable debts, we're talking about specific debts, meaning the particular customers only who will not be able to pay off their debts. So it does not necessarily mean that all of our customers are going to be causing bad debts, but only a few of them. In common cases, these are the ones who have become bankrupt. So how do we recognize the double entry for this irrecoverable debt? So far, we have learned that this is an expense. So expenses are naturally a debit entry. So we're going to debit the irrecoverable debt expense so this is going to increase our expenses in the statement of profit or loss now what is going to be credited what would be credited is the trade receivables meaning that our trade receivables balance is going to be decreased by the amount of the irrecoverable debt so this is your initial recognition now in rare circumstances, there may be customers who pay off their debts even though we've already written off their debt as an irrecoverable one. Let's say in this scenario, I have trade receivables worth $1,000 in total. And out of that $1,000, $100 is going to be irrecoverable because my customer declared bankruptcy. So I am going to debit irrecoverable debt expense $100 and credit trade receivables by $100. So my total trade receivables will then only be $900. Now, suddenly, a couple months later, it turns out this trade receivable that I have already written off has decided to pay. Maybe this person has suddenly gotten some money out of somewhere. So the problem is, I no longer have his balance in my accounts. I've already removed his balance of $100 last time. So what am I going to do now? I cannot reduce the trade receivables as normal because normally when we receive cash from a trade receivable we should debit our cash account and credit our trade receivable account to reflect that we have received payment from them but now this is not the case because the trade receivable account is no longer there for i have already written off his debt of a hundred dollars last time so what am I going to do now? I still need to recognize this debit cash because I have received a payment from them. So instead of crediting trade receivables, what we should do 
is credit the irrecoverable debt expense. So if this customer has paid me back his $100, I would have to debit cash account $100 and credit the irrecoverable debt expense of $100 that I have recorded last time to reverse the effect. So I am basically just adding back my expenses or reducing it, in other words. So for example, I've already written off a, a bad debt of $100 and recognize an irrecoverable debt expense of $100. Now, assuming that the customer who paid me back did not pay off uh, the whole $100, even though I've already written off the entire $100, but let's say he already paid, he only paid us $50. So as in the previous double entry, I'm supposed to credit the irrecoverable debt expense. So I will have to credit by $50 as this was the amount that I had received instead. And my net irrecoverable debt expense will only be 50. So in the SOPL, irrecoverable debt expense will be written at the net amount. Okay. So we've already covered the topic on irrecoverable debt expense. Now let's get into allowances. Allowances and irrecoverable debt expense go in together. However, the treatment to the trade receivables is slightly different. Where in irrecoverable debt expense, we understand that this is a completely bad debt, which is a debt that we expect not to be covered or paid back at all. Allowance is made for caution by the company. In my company, let's say I've had an experience of around 5% of my customers not being able to pay back their debts. So in the next financial year, I'm going to also estimate how much of my customers are not going to pay me back. The main concept is that I don't want to recognize any profits before they actually happen. So allowances are not exactly made for bad debts. They're made for doubtful debts. So the word doubtful means it's possibly irrecoverable. Okay, there's a 50-50 chance this customer is going to pay me or not. And again, I repeat, allowances are made to avoid Claiming profits which fail to actually become realized later on. This is known as the prudence concept. Now in the allowances, we have two types. We have a specific allowance and we have the general allowance. Now the thing about specific allowances is that they're used for a specific doubtful debt. Meaning, out of the 10 customers I have, I'm going to make a specific allowance just for one customer because I think this customer is the only one who may or may not pay off his debt. So that is a specific allowance. A general allowance means it's for the rest of the customers or trade receivables that I have. And it's commonly in the form of a percentage. Now the thing about the general allowance is that it's charged on the remaining trade receivables. What it means by remaining trade receivables is the figure of the trade receivables in the beginning minusing all of the irrecoverable debt expense because remember we're supposed to credit trade receivables when we make an irrecoverable debts and any specific allowances and it's in the form of a percentage so that means i would normally say around two percent of my trade receivables figure is I'm going to make an allowance for. 
2%, 3%. It depends on the company's experience when handling trade receivables. So always remember that a general allowance is based on the remaining trade receivable figure, not on the beginning trade receivable figure. And so when we're going to recognize this allowance, it's going to be calculated based on how much specific allowance I made and how much general allowance I made. To, and that will give us our total allowance figure. Now, when we recognize a total allowance figure, this is later on going to go into our statement of profit or loss as an expense, similar as to how an irrecoverable debts expense is recognized. So when we recognize an allowance for the first time, we are going to recognize this directly as an expense. So if I say 2% of my trade receivables figure, let's say it's $1,000, will be recognized as an allowance. That means 2% times $1,000. So around $20 will be an allowance. And I'm going to list down allowance for trade receivables, $20 in my SOPL. So $20 will be my initial allowance figure. Now let's say in the next year, I've decided to adjust that allowance. So let's say uh, I've now increased my allowance from $20 to $40. So the thing is, in the first year, I've already recognized $20. Now in the next year, I want $40 of allowance. So if there is an increase to my existing allowance figure, I am going to need to expense the amount of increase and also recognize a new allowance figure. So in my example, last year I had $20 of allowance. This year I'm setting up $40 of allowance. So the difference is 40 minus 20 is equal to 20 and this $20 is going to be expensed in my SOPL. And then I'm going to recognize the new $40 as my allowance. So my trade receivables of this year is going to be deducted by $40, not by $20. Now what is going to happen if I decide to reduce it instead? So let's say with my existing allowance, now I'm in the second year, I have $40 in allowance. And in the third year, I've decided that I'm going to decrease it instead. So from $40, now I'm going to decrease to 30. Okay, so what you do to your existing uh, allowance and what will happen to the decrease is that you're going to credit your expenses by the amount in decrease. So when we credit an expense, that technically means we're reducing our expenses. So we're going to re reduce our expenses by the amount in decrease, which was $10. $10 is achieved by 40, my second year allowance, deducted with 30, which is my new year allowance. So $10 is going to be added to my SOPL. And again, a new allowance is recognized. So this year, I'm going to deduct $30 allowance from my trade receivables figure. So now let's take a look at this example. I'm going to be reading out through this example and we'll disclose the solution afterwards. So Alex Gullible has total receivables outstanding at 31st December 2002 of 28,000. In simple words, he has trade receivables 28,000. He believes that about 1% of these balances will not be collected and wishes to make an appropriate allowance. Before now, he has not made any allowance for receivables at all. So this is our first year of making an allowance. So how we calculate the allowance, we should do 1% times 28,000 because 28,000 represents the total receivables that he has. So as you can see here, the allowance required will be $280 in the first year.
Now, on 31st December 2003, his trade receivables amounted to $40,000. His experience during the year has convinced him that an allowance of 5% should be made. Okay, so in the first year, he used 1%. Now, if we're using percentages, commonly this is known as the general allowance because the general allowance is a percentage on the remaining trade receivables. Now, in this scenario, there is no specific allowance and no irrecoverable debts yet. So, uh, this $28,000, let us assume it is already net figure. And this $40,000 is also net figure. So, to make a new general allowance, we should just do 5% times $40,000. And also, in addition to the previous point, uh, the double entry was debit irrecoverable debt expense of 280 and credit the allowance of 280. So note how he has expensed this allowance off and he's reduced his trade receivables for that year by $280. Now, he already has an allowance of 280 and in the second year, he wants to create another allowance. So we need to consider the increase and the decrease. So let's see how much 5% of 40,000 is. So the allowance that is required now is 5% of $40,000, which is $2,000. Now, remember how we need to adjust uh, our allowance figures. So if last year he had 280, this year we need 2,000. That means there is an increase in allowance. So what we do with the increase, we need to expense it off into the SOPL, the profit or loss statement. So the difference will then be 2000 minus $280, which is equal to 1720 And here we know it as the additional allowance required, or you could just say the difference between the two. So we're going to expense this off of 1720 and we're going to deduct our current year trade receivables figure with the new allowance recognized, which is $2,000. As you can see, the double entries will be debit irrecoverable debt expense, $1,720, and credit allowance for receivables, $1,720. The reason why we just need to charge off the difference is because last year, we already have recognized 280 and we have already expensed that off too. So now we're just adding to the allowance and the more allowance we have, the more expense it is. So we're just adding the last year's allowance with 1720 And finally, the trade receivables of this year is 40000 It should be deducted with the new trade allowance recognized, which was 2000 So at the end of the year, our trade receivables will be 38000 Now let's take a look at this next question. XY Co. has a balance of receivables of 250000 It wishes to provide a specific allowance of 60% on a debt of $20,000. So as you can see, it's a specific allowance on a specific debt, meaning just probably one person. So what you will need to do is calculate the specific allowance first. So 60% of 20000 will be $12,000. This is our specific allowance. It also wishes to set up a general allowance of 2% of receivables. So as we remember, general allowance is the trade receivables minus any specific debts that have an allowance on them minus any bad debts too. So in here we have a balance of $250,000. We're going to need to deduct this debt of $20,000. Because this 20000 is not going to be included in our general allowance. Why? It's because we already have a specific allowance on that. So if we charge another general allowance on this 20000 debt, it's going to be charged twice the amount of allowances. So what we do is, first we find the net trade receivables figure. So we take 250 minus the 20000 because there was a specific allowance on that. And then we get the remaining 230,000. Only then we can get 
of 230 to get our general allowance figure, which is 4,600. So what is the charge to the statement of profit or loss? In other words, what is your total allowance figure? What we are going to expense is the 12,000 and the 4,600. So at the end, we're going to get 16,600 allowance in the SOPL. Okay, let's try one more example that is slightly more complex. Fatima's receivables at 31st May 2007 were 723,800. The balance on the allowance for receivables account at 1st June 2006 was 15,250. Now also note how the dates are different. This is 31st May 2007, whereas this was 1st June 2006. This means this was at the beginning of the financial year. So this person Fatima already has an allowance of 15,250. So maybe by the end of the year, she's going to change it. Now as shown here, Fatima has decided to change the allowance for receivables to 1.5% of receivables at 31st May 2007. So now your allowance is going to change and the difference is what is going to go into the statement of profit or loss. So what you need to do here is figure out how much is the new allowance figure, which is going to be 1.5% of the trade receivables at 31st May. And we know that the receivables at 31st May is $723,800. So 1.5% times 723,800 is going to be your new allowance figure. So let's take a look here. The new allowance figure is going to be 10,857, whereas in the beginning of the year, we had an allowance of 15,250. So as you can see here, there is now a reduction in the allowance. In the last example, we had an increase in allowance, which is going to be debiting to our expenses. But what will happen if there is a reduction is we're going to credit our expenses. So we're going to reduce our expenses by 4,393. Now, there was still another line to this question. On 14th May 2007, Fatima received 540 in final settlement of an amount written off during the year ended 31st May 2006. So, she had already written off a bad debt. So when we write off a bad debt, it's debit irrecoverable debts expense, credit trade receivables. But she has received 540 in respect of that bad debt. So now we need to reverse the account. So we're going to need to debit cash account 540 and credit the irrecoverable debts expense 540. So again, we're crediting the expenses. So we are going to reduce the expense further. So we have already reduced the expense by the reduction in allowance. But we also need to reduce the expense with the 540 that has already been written off. So at the end, the total credit to the statement of profit or loss is 540 plus 4,393, so 4,933. We have come to the end of the chapter. Thank you for watching.